Welcome to Solo Travel Adventures, my sisters. Don't let fear hold you back from traveling alone. I want you to gather your courage, listen to inspiring stories, and learn how to travel solo while safely navigating new places from this show. I'm Cheryl Esch, solo travel advocate and travel coach, and I want you to have a transformative experience when you travel solo. So pack your bags, book your flight, and check one more time for that passport. It's time to explore the world. Hello, sister travelers, and happy new year to you. Well, I don't know about you, but I love to spend some time reflecting on my previous year and then working on what I want to achieve in this upcoming year. But I also break it down, not just for my personal life, business life, physical life. I also have a section where I look at sort of my travel goals. And maybe this is something new to you, and maybe you're just kind of getting this travel bug, so to speak, and you've never done that before, um, I would encourage you to kind of listen to today's episode and see if it sparks any inspiration for you to be writing down some travel goals that you want to achieve in 2024. So in reviewing what I accomplished, I think we all need to start there, right? We need to see what we've accomplished so that we can feel good about this past year. And yes, we all experience ups and downs, uh, failures, disappointments, things like that, or things that kind of take us off our our path. Maybe something came up. Uh, maybe there was an unexpected uh, situation in your family that prevented you from maybe even doing any travel this year, past year, I should say, 2023. But now it's a new year. I love a new year. I love cracking open that brand new journal with that fresh page and that whole idea of this is a clean slate, something new and can something to look forward to. So as far as travel goals, uh, I'll share with you what my 2023 travel goals were and um, the ones that I accomplished and the ones that I didn't, right? So let's start with the good stuff. Um, So on my travel goals for 2023, I had wanted to do at least two solo trips and I did accomplish that. I had, and one was to be international and that I did as well. So I had one international solo trip and then one solo trip that was um, in my home country. Another goal I had was to see uh, three national parks. Well, actually I only wanted to see two that I had never been to, but I actually got to three this past year. And two were two that I had never been to. So I got to, you know, Rocky Mountain National Park. I got to Great White Sand Dunes, which is one I had not been to. And then I did Big Ben in October. Um, And then my other goal that I did accomplish was I wanted to spend my birthday traveling somewhere. And so my birthday was in April and I actually, the luckiest girl alive, I was able to spend my birthday in Paris this past April. And so that was just amazing. But the trip itself was also a goal in that I had been planning for a while to kind of do a reminiscent goal, a uh, travel to Europe with uh, my best friend from college, in which we did the same trip, pretty much, uh, back in our 20s. So we, you know, had wanted to return for a long time. And we did accomplish that goal this past year. Um, now, two things that I didn't get accomplished that were on my travel goals was I wanted to actually have a second international trip in 2023, the later half. Well, that didn't happen. And the truth be told, I got a corporate job. And so for the last six months of the year, I was working in a corporate job. And so that really kind of put a damper on being able to do some extended international travel. Um, And then the other thing I didn't accomplish was I had wanted to do an overnight hiking or weekend trip, and I didn't quite get to do that. I did some hiking, of course, throughout the year, which was great, Um, but it's okay. I got some great things accomplished. I had some fun times in 2023 with my travels, and it really showed me a lot about myself. Uh, Every time I go, I learn something new about myself. So you know, all the trips had something different 
um, to teach me. And so as I look forward to 2024, I have even a more audacious goals. They are, some of them are pretty big and I'm really going to strive for them. I'm really thinking positively about them. I'm, I'm, you know, knowing maybe some won't happen, but I'm looking positively to they are going to happen and some are actually already planned. So that's even more encouraging for me. So I'm going to share with you my 2024 travel goals, destinations I plan to go. Some are still in the works, so I don't have all that to share. Um, So one of my goals in 2024 is to do four solo trips. Now last year I only did two. So I'm kind of doubling that up. I want two of them to be international. And I want two of them to be in the US. Now I've already planned my two in the US already. So I got one in January this month, um, going to Sawarno National Park. It's in Arizona. And then in April, I'll be hitting uh, Guadalupe uh, National Park. um, And probably one other park on my way. So that'll be my two solo trips in the US happening. And then looking forward to two international trips. Um, I tentatively, uh, it's kind of up in the air, we got lots of family stuff going on this year with some college graduation, I got both my kids are moving in April. And so I kind of have this, uh, I've been wanting to do the Camino Portuguese. And that will probably happen later than I thought. So I'm looking at maybe May or June for that, potentially. So I'll keep you posted, of course. And then I'm planning, um, you know, maybe another international trip, uh, potentially in the fall. I love to travel in October. So that's probably going to happen around that time. Another goal I have is I want to visit four more U.S. national parks that I've never been to. So Um, as of right now, I believe if I'm counting correctly, I've been to uh, 19 national parks, I believe. Um, so I obviously my goal was to get to all 63. Um, and so that's obviously a work in progress. Um, every year I try to get a few more added in there. Um, another goal is I want to be traveling somewhere during Thanksgiving. I had wanted to do that this past year, but, uh, when I, thought about it um, and then looked at pricing to possible places to go it was rather expensive and for me Thanksgiving is um, I'll put it this way not the best time of year for me I'm divorced so and I don't have family around so it uh, like this past Thanksgiving I spent it with a family friend and um, just it's just not the same as you might know. So that's something we celebrate in the US. um, But it's usually that last uh, week of November. So I'd like to be somewhere else besides here in the US, um, crashing some family (laughs) Thanksgiving dinner. So um, that's something I'll probably have to plan. And finally, this is also a large goal of mine and something I've been wanting to do for a while. And I keep putting it out there and hoping Uh, it will come to fruition is I want to host a women's retreat. So that again, is something that likely will happen more in the fall, as I'm trying to uh, work on some other situations in my family life to get, you know, so have that time and be able to secure a place to host uh, the women's retreat folks. So I don't know what your goals were. Maybe you've never done that before in regards to travel. So it's a good opportunity to be writing some of that down. I'm also going to be hosting a one, a one hour workshop on January 20th. Um, I'll give you more details on that coming up, but I wanted to really talk about, you know, where should you go in 2024? Have you decided, do you have a list? Maybe your bucket list is a mile long like mine. Well, I have some great suggestions. Now, these are, I picked 12 popular places um, to go in 2024. I've combed a bunch of resources uh, that have listed many places that you can go in 2024. And I picked my 12 based on being a woman 
solo traveler. And so some of the places I chose, obviously, safety is in mind. So I want you to think about that. You can go and look up these longer lists and see if there's other places that in, intrigue you. Um, but I pulled from various lists, you know, created by places like Travel and Leisure, Lonely Planet, Point Sky, and CNN and Condé Neste. So these places also list uh, popular destinations for 2024. And there's a longer list. I picked 12. I'm thinking, you know, one for each month. I don't know, maybe you can do it. Um, but I always, always keep um, safety in mind and the ease of travel uh, for women, uh, you know, whether it's they have a good infrastructure uh, for transportation um, or, you know, is it cost effective? So some of that kind of came into play when I picked these 12 places. Uh, some of them are considered hot spots uh, for 2024. So keep that in mind. But um, let's start with number one. And this was like really recently on a cover of Travel and Leisure, I believe, saying, and again, I think it was pretty popular this past year, but it's even more so in 2024 is Japan. If you can get to Japan, my son raves about it. He's going back again this year. I have a friend of a friend that just I just spent New Year's Eve with and he was raving about Japan and how he's, he wants to go back as well. So it's a great place to go and experience a, a wonderful culture. Um, the food is fabulous and it's also rather inexpensive. Uh, so, you know, get Japan on your list there. It is now on my list <laughs> and there's so much to see, right? There's um, not just, you have the city life, but you also have outside the city, you can see you know, maybe do some forest bathing, as they call it, and get out and do some of those uh, beautiful hikes they might have there or just see other parts that are less, uh, less touristy, right? Japan, huge country, right? Number two, Paris, France. Now, why? Yes, I know I've just came back from there, but that's not the reason I chose it. Um, they have the 2024 Olympics happening this summer. And of course, Tour de France is there and they've actually moved the final, um, final staging area of the Tour de France to um, South France, uh, I think through Nice, um, because Paris will be um, pretty busy during that time for the Olympics. So if that's something that you uh, want to do and go in and experience kind of this excitement, um, maybe you're into summer sports, Paris will be the place to be. Do know that it will be crowded and expensive. So if that's not your cup of tea, then maybe don't go to France. I mean, maybe this is a warning to not go there this summer, right? So just keeping that in mind. But uh, you know, some people like to travel according to like events, um, or different things that are happening in the world. So that's an idea. I mean, Paris in itself, um, even outside of the Olympics has also uh, become pretty popular place to be. Um, number three, Costa Rica has made the list on a couple of those place, uh, those resources that I combed through. And it's just, you know, it's got beautiful coastlines and beaches and, but it also has some city life, you know, if you want to get into go to the capital. Um, and it's just, there's some hiking into the, you know, the rainforest there. So they have some diversity in such a small area. It is on my list. Number four, um, Quebec, Canada. Now, um, hearing more about Canada in general, as far as certain cities and places to go. So Canada is, um, you know, starting to become more popular. Um, Quebec City in particular, um, my roommate just came back from there. She was there this past year and just raved about it. It's just got this um, kind of this French, obviously, feel to it. So maybe if you don't make it to Paris, France, maybe consider Quebec City in Canada. So um, and then also consider when you go, right? If you don't like a lot of snow, um, maybe go during the summer months. Um, number five, Iceland is still really gaining popularity. Now, I know that they've had um, some volcano eruptions. Um, 
So do keep that in mind. But the reason why Iceland is going to be more popular in 2024 is because they're saying there's going to be more sightings of the Northern Lights. So if you've always wanted to see the Aurora Borealis, you want to get to Iceland and even parts of Canada um, will be able to see um, more action um, with those Northern Lights. So go ahead and get that booked. Um, speaking of kind of like nature kind of stuff, um, number six, I'm just going to say the solar eclipse, it's coming across different cities in the U.S. All right, that happens on April 8th. If you happen to live in the U.S. and this is something that you want to experience and you live close to one of these following cities, um, it's going to pass over these various cities and these cities are going to have going to be able to see the most part of the solar eclipse up to even 99% depending on which city you choose, but also up to two to four minutes of darkness in the middle of the day. So that includes um, Buffalo, New York, um, I'm trying to think Cleveland, Ohio, it's going to come down hit Indianapolis, Indiana. I know I'm missing something before it gets to Texas, but then there's um, Dallas, we'll see part of most of it. And then San Antonio, we'll see quite a bit. Um, again, I think 99% of that solar eclipse. So I know San Antonio is um, kind of getting busy. So if this is something you want, you know, make sure you plan your your stay uh, right now, actually, before it gets um, booked out. Okay, number seven, Queensland, Australia. Oh, gosh, to get to the world down under would be amazing. Um, but Queensland has become popular. Um, people are moving away from, yes, you can go to Sydney, you know, that's kind of a popular place in Australia, but uh, Queensland is getting a little more recognition. So again, remember, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, they are on opposite seasons of us. So uh, right now it is summer down there, probably a great time to be there. Um, and I did see the Sydney fireworks, by the way, um, on TV, and they were phenomenal last night, by the way. So um, if you're planning to go to Australia, consider Queensland. These are also these places I'm also mentioning um, are also uh, great places because um, a lot of them there there may be not like, for example, Australia, um, Canada. And if you do the solar eclipse, these are all places that um, English is widely spoken. So, you know, communication uh, would be uh, ni- would be a nice thing to not have to deal with. Um, number eight, um, Albania. Okay, so this is a small country sandwiched on the Adriatic coast between Greece and Montenegro. Now, Greece has gotten really popular. Uh, overpopulated as far as tourists. A lot of people have been getting to Greece. So this might be a great alternative if you want to get to that area, but you don't want to be uh, too much uh, dealing with more people than necessary. So a less lesser known little country, um, Albania, it's still going to be beautiful along that coastline. It might be something to consider. Number nine, Colombia. Colombia is becoming a really hot destination. And yes, it's becoming safer. Uh, and so it's something to consider. There's some great cities in Colombia that you could. And there's some cheap flights too, uh, from the US, I should say, getting into Colombia. So again, if budget is a concern, and that's something, you know, if you live in the US or on kind of maybe Canada, even it'd be easier shot down to get to Colombia with a cheaper flight. Number 10, Chile. Oh, Chile is becoming popular. It is, you know, people that like to get outside, they like to go along the coast, you got the coastline, you have um, hiking, you know, inland a little bit. It's just become really a, a great nature place to go uh, for people, people that I know that have gone there. That's the reason that they go there. So Chile, um, number 11, uh, Croatia, Croatia is still a hot place to be. Um, it's been, of course, growing in popularity over the past few years. Um, and again, it's, you know, it's that Southern European kind of uh, country. Um, it's, there's water things that you can do. Um, I've seen a lot of high up uh, biking 
trips that people do in Croatia. They call it a boat and bike tour. Um, So if that's something that interests you, you can look into that. A lot of that happens in Croatia. And then finally, my 12th pick is Botswana. It is one of the safest countries in Africa. It's also, its tourism is well developed. Um, You know, it's got some great African safaris and some national parks there. I have Africa on my list to get to, to see a safari. And so I felt confident putting Botswana on this list as I did some research to make sure it was a safe place um, to be. Now, these are my picks. And if you want to check out those um, prominent resources that I mentioned where I combed and pulled some of these places from, they have longer lists. Um, But they may not be considering you as a solo female traveler when they're listing these places. Um, For example, one of the places mentioned Cairo, Egypt as a hotspot for 2024. I would love to go there. I personally don't feel like it's safe to be there. Um, To me, it's still a little too close to Gaza. And so I personally wouldn't go there right now. Um, It might be something as uh, things settle down that I might reconsider. But you are entitled to your opinion. Some people have been there. Some women have gone there and they say it's fine. So I'm just playing it a little more conservative in picking places that I feel are safe for solo women travelers um, to explore in 2024. Now, are any of these on your list? Maybe you have your own separate list, or maybe some of them have caught you thinking, well, I should add this to my list. Well, maybe you're also lost with, I don't even know where to begin. How do you decide where to go? As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be hosting a one hour workshop to help you decide where to go how to pick a destination. And not just that, go a little beyond that and decide, start to plan that trip. You know, how do you start those beginning stages of planning? So that's going to be on January 20th. I will have more information coming on how you could sign up and register for that. And it'll just be a one hour and it will likely for my U.S. people, it will be in the morning. And this is to help accommodate uh, people in different time zones that so that they could join as well. So um, looking at that to make sure we can accommodate as many people as possible. So make your list for 2024. Make a list, one, of travel goals that you have. They can be small. Maybe you just want to get out and do a weekend trip somewhere or do a road trip. Maybe you do want to finally book that first international trip and listening to these 12, maybe it gave you some ideas or maybe you have something else on your list that you desperately want to get to. Write it down, all right? Create that list, set your goals, and then get out there and have the adventure. Hey, sister travelers, did this podcast inspire and encourage you? or move you to get out there and travel? Wonderful. There are three ways you can thank me. First one is leave a written review for the show on Apple Podcast. Two, share the show with your sister travelers, your friends, your family. And three, subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. And thank you again for listening to the show. Sisters, be fearless, take the leap, and get out there have an adventure.